today we're going to be going into more detail on the current account deficit. We've looked at the, current, the balance of payments. We've looked at the balance of payments. We've seen the two sides of the balance of payments, the current account and the capital and financial account. Today we're going to look at the current account and in particular the deficit on the current account. Because Australia has had a current account deficit for the last 40 years. The first thing we want to look at is the actual uh, balance on the current account for the last, this goes back about 20, 25 years. If you go back 40 years, you will see that it is constantly in a deficit. So there are three different things that we see here. The first one I want to point out is the net income balance. And we also call this net primary income. It's this green one here that goes right in the middle. And you can see it doesn't really change much over time. It had a bit of a deterioration here and then it got a little bit better. But over time it's very stable at about 3% of GDP. Okay. Net incomes is what we call the structural component of the current account deficit. It doesn't change over the business cycle. It stays fairly uh, at roughly the same level over time. Compare that to the trade balance up here. It's the yellow one that's closer to the zero line. Over time, it goes up, it goes down. It goes up, down, up, down, up, down, up, down. And this follows roughly the business cycle. It's a combination of the Australian business cycle and the global economy's business cycle. Okay, it's, it's exports minus your imports. So when the global economy is doing well, exports are high, and the trade balance tends to move to surplus. When the Australian economy is strong, Australian businesses and consumers buy and demand a lot of imports, and so the trade balance deteriorates, and you tend to get a trade deficit. What I want you to appreciate from this is that it's a cyclical, it's a cyclical measure. The trade balance goes up and down based on the business cycle. Compare that to net incomes. It's very steady. It's very stable. Okay, so the trade balance is cyclical. The net incomes balance is structural. And if you add the two together, you can see the current account deficit. It ranges between 2% of GDP and 7% of GDP. But usually around sort of the, the 4 to 5% mark, sometimes 3%. Uh, and it depends on what the trade balance is at. Sometimes Australia exports more than it imports. Sometimes it imports more than it exports, but these are the last three recessions we've had in Australia. Okay? Can anyone have a think about what might happen to demand for imports when we have a recession? Yeah, is that a, an offer? Okay, demand for imports goes down. If demand for imports goes down, the trade balance will improve. Because there are less imports, roughly the same amount of exports. And you can see if we go here, during the 1990-91 recession, the trade balance improved because Australia was buying fewer imports. These next two weren't recessions, they were just economic downturns, so you did have a negative quarter of GDP growth. You had an improvement in the trade balance there, and during the GFC you had an improvement in the trade balance when Australia uh, did see a decline in economic growth. This one's a bit complicated because the global economy also saw a downturn, but the Australian dollar fell dramatically, and that counteracted the impact of that. And you can see the cyclical impact. Australia has had a current account deficit, CAD, for the last four decades. It's comprised of both structural and cyclical components. Structural component is a net income deficit, which remains fairly stable at 3 to 4% of GDP, and a cyclical component, that's the trade balance. It fluctuates between a surplus of 1% and a deficit of 3% of GDP. That's recent trends. As a result, the current account deficit ranges from 2 to 7% of GDP. The current account deficit structural factors include traditionally low levels of household savings and Australia's high level of net foreign liabilities. Make sure to write this down as well. Cyclical factors include the terms of trade, the value of the Australian dollar, the strength of the global economy and the strength of the Australian economy. Make sure you understand what the relationship between each of these and the current account deficit is. So from the top. The current account deficit is high when the terms of trade are low. The current account deficit is high when the Australian dollar is high. The current account deficit is high when glo the global economy is sluggish. And the current account deficit is high when the Australian economy is strong. 